when people think about quitting their jobs, they sort of imagine it as being this like moment of transition where you have your job, you quit, you're done, and then you, you get to like relax and be free for a while. And that was not my experience of quitting my job. I'm Yoel Roth. Previously for about eight years, I worked in trust and safety at Twitter, um, including a year and a half as the company's head of trust and safety. I think it's easy to construct sort of a before and after with the Twitter acquisition where um, you say it was great before and then it was terrible after. And I think the truth is always a little bit more complicated and somewhere in the middle. The company recognized that its business interests, its growth and its viability were fundamentally connected to its investments in trust and safety. Twitter realized that it was going to be viable as a service if people wanted to use it and they trusted that the platform was not a free-for-all hellscape of abuse. Technology is made of people. It's what people choose to do with it, and it's the expressions of people and communities through technology that can lead to really incredible and amazing things or really damaging and destructive and awful things. And it's trust and safety's role at these companies to try to balance those equities in a way that promotes the positive outcomes and makes it harder for the negative ones to take place. An asset that I had in the days following the acquisition of Twitter was that I was convinced I would be fired at any moment. I was certain it would happen. What ultimately led me to leave the company was that it felt like the work of holding back a tide of potentially bad decisions at the company being driven by a lot of different factors was an insurmountable uphill battle. I believe we did make the right decision in that moment. And I will say it is not a decision that anybody at Twitter took lightly. It was not a, it was not a decision that we enjoyed. It was a decision, by this point, Donald Trump had, had tweeted about me. He had called me a hater. Uh, I had been on the cover of the New York Post. He held that cover up in the Oval Office as he signed an executive order about social media censorship. This is the arbiter. This guy is the arbiter of what's supposed to go on Twitter. His name is Yoel Roth. The first person to try to destroy my life was Donald Trump. And, and I still didn't relish even for one second the notion of removing him from Twitter because that is a scary amount of power for a company to have and for a person to have. And for folks who said, I wish I could have been the one to push the button, I can say you don't. Nobody wants that power. When I left Twitter in November of 2022, a lot of things happened very, very quickly. Some of it not particularly enjoyable, like testifying in front of Congress. Guess what, a lot of people agreed with me, but you called that COVID misinformation. By the way, I'm a member of Congress and you're not. I was criticized for the fact that my first public statement after leaving Twitter didn't trash Elon. People really wanted me to do that. And I got a lot of criticism saying I was too mild, I wasn't critical enough. But in my time at Twitter, I didn't find that Elon emerged clearly as the villain that people wanted him to be. I think he's more complicated than that. I think the way he makes decisions is more complicated than that. And even though he ultimately did something that I believe is unforgivable, which is publicly lie about me in a way that put me in physical danger, that forced me to sell my house, that has caused damage to my career, even though he did all of that, and I don't think we're going to be friends anymore, I think as a leader at Twitter in my time, in my experience working with him, it was never quite so simple. The next week I was scheduled to speak at a conference in Florida and the conference organizers offered to have somebody interview me about everything that was happening at Twitter. And I agreed. It was after that interview and after it was broadcast that everything shifted. It went from being, you know, perhaps this neutral disengagement to being actively targeted by Elon, by his supporters on Twitter, and ultimately the, the sort of cascade of consequences that played out for me 
whether it's the Twitter files, which is the release of my corporate Gmail account to a number of journalists, which I guess counts as transparency, to the more damaging campaign of taking a portion of my dissertation out of context and using that to try to portray me as somebody sympathetic to pedophilia, which I'm obviously not. Something we didn't do well at Twitter was explain how we draw that line of lawful but awful, how we think about harm. What are the criteria we use to assess it? Because the truth is there isn't an obvious answer to it. And I think when you're trying to balance these different factors, you're not going to be able to arrive at something that's universally right, but you can explain your decision-making in substantive ways. And I think that's where the entire industry has failed profoundly. In 2020, when I was on the cover of the New York Post, I was there because of a strategy to try to prevent Twitter from fact-checking lies shared by the former president about the security of the 2020 election. I wasn't just being personally targeted, it was the targeting of a whole branch of work. And unfortunately, I think that dynamic is only going to get more common. We see it happening to academics, we see it happening to the employees of tech companies, we see it happening to journalists and activists, and the sooner that we can understand that these aren't isolated attacks, but are part of a strategy that is trying to scare people away from doing the work of combating harm on the internet and in society, the sooner we can figure out what to do about it. Whoever my next employer is, whatever I end up doing next, the lessons that I learn about how to protect a team from these types of influences and this type of targeting is going to be a critical lesson that I want to learn and that I think the rest of the social media industry needs to learn.